Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... This episode was brought to you by The Mythwits, a geek pop culture talk show. Every week we interview an industry guest and make with the funny. Check us out at Mythwits.com, YouTube, and iTunes, and watch us live every Monday night at 9.30 p.m. EST. Island Dice. And by viewers like you. Ouchies Bat Reps, the place where you follow your dreams, so long as those dreams are 70 ton tanks, in which case it shouldn't be that hard to keep up. Ever since I was a little boy and I was cutting my teeth in advanced squad leader, my father had gone out of his way to show me how awesome the King Tiger was. So, I jumped at the opportunity to paint a couple up for a Schweer Panzer list. This is not a list that'll win any friends, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's the worst I've ever made. In this blue-on-blue -blue encounter, my opponent went for a similar tank list, but decided to be far more moderate with it, taking Panzerkampfwagen 4s and Arnises instead of the crazy insanity that is heavy tanks. We are playing Hasty Attack at 1780 points. The list is actually a themed list, one that I will be taking to the Tanker Street Tourney over at Little Rock, Arkansas in the next couple weeks. It should be a lot of fun, but I need to break the rust out because I am very familiar with hordes of infantry with very little distinguishing characteristic about them, but I do have a problem running a heavy tank list, or even a German list. I'm actually quite speculative about how to even run the list. Uh, the list is actually set up as three individual platoons with the CEO, and I realize this is a mistake. What I should have done is set up the CEO and then the two YC and then create two combat platoons. My initial problem was that if I divvy it up that way, it's only three platoons that'll be on the board, but my concern is that in any mission in which there is reserves, I'm only going to be deploying two platoons. I'm going to be leaving a bunch of uh, tanks off the board, but if I leave one as a 2IC and CIC, then I'm getting all three tanks on the board. It actually doesn't make much of a difference, but if I leave it with a 2IC, then I get a platoon that's potentially up with three tanks in the assault. This is going to be an important point later on. Since this mission does have reserves, I end up deploying with just three tanks. I deploy one King Tiger over on the northern end of the board to guard the objective and keep his respective tanks from taking it, and take the CIC and his combat platoon and start rushing him up the southern edge of the board. He's actually a double ace. It's uh, pretty awesome. He took rapid reload, and all shots count, and I think Schnell. Well, it's the guy that's next to him uh, only has Schnell. On the northern end of the map, I waste no time pushing the Tiger tank up towards the bridge so I can start taking pot shots and generally decide the pace in which the fight's being played. He, in response, begins moving his tanks up the southern edge, trying to get into the woods that are right in front of me and try to get into a close range or some sort of covering fire against the Tiger tanks. I know I won't want to be uh, on the receiving end of those things, so as I guess it's an okay move. He also splashes them with artillery, but it doesn't do anything. The deflector shields are completely operational, and they completely bounce off them harmlessly. Scratch that, the CIC's buddy has rapid reload, so that's pretty awesome. The Hornices, however, have a nice firing platform on top of that hill. They can see everything down below. All my moves are being dictated by whether or not his shots are coming off on the front or flanks of the Tiger tanks. He gets air support, and he does a lot. Uh, I can't seem to do much against it. I roll my sporadic dice against it, and I'm not able to wave them off. That's my strategy. I don't tend to use the JU-87s unless there's nothing to oppose them, but they're almost there explicitly for anti-air dice. I think air support's probably the only thing that can really hurt my Tiger tank. First kill comes early as the CIC manages to kill one of the Panzer IVs. Uh, it wasn't that hard to do when you consider it. 
It has an anti-tank of 16, and quite frequently, I think my opponent thought I was joking when I was asking him what his front armor was, but lo and behold, everything that it fires is going to go straight to firepower, and that's a vast departure from what I'm used to with the Italians, where just about everything punctures, or at least I fail to puncture everything that my opponent can field. His air support proves to be just a little bit more than limited as it shows up time and time and again and there's nothing I can do to throw my dice at his air support to be able to stop it. I, I consider throwing my dice at him, but I don't think that would be very really sportsman. Nonetheless, the deflector shields are completely fully armed and operational and deflect all the attacks from the air support, but lo and behold, I wasn't paying attention to the uh, shots coming across the field and the Hornices kill one of the King Tigers. That is not a mistake I will be forgetting anytime soon. He got just right onto the side of the hole from across the map and manages to completely destroy the tank. Meanwhile, the Gurpanzer pioneers on the northern end of the map arrive from reserves and are immediately shelled with artillery. It causes them to bail quite a few of the half-tracks and their infantry have to dismount as of course. Since my dice have been exhausted trying to intercept his Falk Wilson, the JU-87s finally show up to try to do some sort of damage to their artillery, but it's barely worth mentioning because you might as well figure that they're too busy eating their strudels, or maybe they're drunk, because they do absolutely no damage to them. Meanwhile, the CIC begins rushing towards the south, trying to take on those panzers behind their cover, while another tank comes in from reserves and starts scrambling up to help the CIC take care of that nuisance. The infantry on the northern end begins digging in and moving into the forest on the northern end of the board because they still have some tanks over there and they can cause a great deal of trouble to the infantry if they decide to assault in that direction and the King Tiger can't take care of them all. Potentially it could be a real disaster for them and so long as they're hiding behind the trees there's nothing he can do about it. Meanwhile, he takes some shots over there at the artillery. It's got a long reach, that cannon on that thing. It's just reaching across the board, tagging everything within line of sight. However, my opponent is very aware of what's going on, and he keeps those hornices sighted in on those tanks, begging me to th show the hull again so that he can get a nice, clean side shot at him and bail another tank. As right now, it's the only way that he can kill him. Or he can keep calling in that blasted air support. Once again, we start accusing each other of you know, foul dice. Because he can't seem to not get air support, and I can't seem to not turn on the deflector shields on those tanks. He even keeps pushing the Hornices out there in such tempting positions that I could have took a shot at, but he keeps making the Stormtrooper roll, doesn't bog or anything, and gets those Hornices back into cover before the Tiger can do anything about it. His air support keeps calling in, and it starts pitting the infantry in the northern end in the woods, keeping them from digging in and asserting themselves on the northern objective. His tanks even begin to start getting calls, he's trying to go after the infantry themselves, pelting them with machine gun rounds from distance and cannon rounds where they can, just taunting that tiger on the northern end to do something about it, but now it's got targets on either side and it has to pick which one to engage. On the southern end, the, two, the CIC is starting to pick off tanks left and right, there's not a whole lot they can do, they just got a platoon there with a failed tank, and the Hornices are still dictating the pace of the game. I have to keep my front armor facing towards them, or they're going to start picking off tanks left and right. As he sent a lone panzer to try to flank the northern force, I send a lone tiger to go and deal with him. It's a dangerous game of cat and mouse where he's trying to hide behind a hill, but my slow lumbering tiger too begins chasing him down. He's just gonna die tired, or in flames, as the CIC has finally managed to not rebail over and over again the tank that was right in front of him. He pulls back outside of the artillery that I've been ranging in and being completely nullified by its deflector shield, while the northern tank begins pulling back itself. Completely outflanked on either side, it now needs to use the river to its advantage to try to funnel the tanks in. He gets his air support again. But thankfully the deflector shields are still active on that Tiger II and it doesn't look like it's going to be stopping anytime soon. 
On the northern end, his tanks will begin charging across the bridge. The infantry have no inherent long-range AT ability, so they have to weather it and take it. But thankfully, they've dug in, but it's not really slowing them down much. They're taking losses left and right. The Tiger itself has to back up next turn because they were wise enough to smoke it, so now it has to lose its rate of fire whenever it moves around. The Northern Tiger II pulls back again, shelling the tanks that are assaulting it left and right, bailing and destroying what it can while the other combat platoon begins wheeling far to the north to begin to try to cover the assault that my opponent's trying to make on the Northern Objective. The CIC even pulls back again, trying to avoid being singled out by the artillery and air support and potentially throw a little shell downrange if it can find an opportunity. My opponent keeps his panzers floored, gunning it towards the objective as the Tiger II backs up as fast as it can, but it's not fast enough. It's 8 inches versus his normal tank move, plus Stormtrooper, which I have been making lately for that tank up there. And he's got it flanked on both sides. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to pick a target, start shooting at it, and give a hull shot to the next one. The northern objective is contested. Something has to be done about this, or the attacking German player, me, is going to lose. More tanks begin shoring in as I floor the Tiger IIs as fast as they can over towards the objective to try to peel them off. He's got a window of opportunity here. It's just far enough outside the infantry that I'd have to get out and assault them over an open ground in order to be able to contest the objective. So he's either going to take it now or he's not. I spend a turn shooting at him and completely whiff it. There's nothing that happens. As a matter of fact, he even fires back and nothing happens to me in return. It is a round of bad dice rolls for both of us. My gunner eventually corrects his prescription on his glasses and manages to kill one of those Panzerkampfwagen 4s. I decide to give the tank a little bit of breathing room to prevent more side hole shots, the only way you can kill me, and back it off the objective. I move it back about six inches. I don't know what I was thinking. To contest an objective, it's four. But thank goodness he failed morale and the whole unit routed off. I had a good buddy there, he was just sitting on pins and needles. He knew the game would be over right there, and he didn't say anything like a good sport. But statistics catch up even to the best deflector shield as the CIC buys it in an artillery bombardment. He manages to lose it by just one, and he makes firepower. It was very, very sad to lose a double ace like that. The Gert Panzer Pioneers pull up their transports, or at least the ones that survived, and they remount the transports because we're changing strategies. We're, we can't move back into the northern end of the map because he still has more tanks up there, and he's actually getting some reserves of some Pac-40, so I can't, I can't assault that anymore. So we need a change of plans. We're getting back in the half-tracks, and we're heading south. We are now down two tanks, that's roughly half my point value in force, and we've lost a couple stands of infantry. It's still looking okay, I mean I've got a good fighting force, we can do this. My opponent however has been completely locked up, having lost nearly everything with uh, an ability to move within any kind of reasonable time frame, or with armor, and so he's stuck on the defensive, responding to what I'm doing, and he begins doing everything that he can. From that firing position along the center edge of the board, he has a good advantage point from the rest of the field. I actually regret not taking that side of the board right about now. The half-tracks trumble up behind the forest and the ridge line, trying to gain what cover that they can, and dismount the infantry. We're going to assault the artillery on the southern edge of the board. It's actually a little unseen over at the bottom left of the screen. 
we can force him to do a company morale check if he loses the two units that are in there. It's an AA battery and just some of those artillery pieces. The Hornices, however, have not taken this completely unnoticed and have realigned themselves along the tree line, facing down the range, and it turns out I am completely visible to them. Not only are the infantry getting shelled by artillery, the Hornices are popping half-track after half-track. There's nothing I can do to save them at this point, and I lose fully half of the transportation company in the assault. As a result, the pioneers route off the board. This is actually a mistake. We counted the loss of the transports in terms of whether or not the platoon should take a morale check, but as you'll check the rules, it doesn't count. The transports never count for the rest of it. It's page 173 of the rulebook. Nonetheless, I'm still in fairly fighting trim, though it's certainly a lot grimmer. I've now gotten to the point where if I lose anything, I'm forced to completely route from the table. I have no CO to make a morale check, so the, the remaining tank that I have that's operationally viable, I start shoving it through the wreckages of his friends and start plowing towards the enemy. My opponent, however, knows what's at stake and begins hurling at it with everything that he has. All the artillery in the arsenal, well, it's, it's one battery, but the deflector shields are fully armed and operational and there's nothing he can really do about it. So I begin charging the tank at him, greedy for the crushy squishy bits that are at the other end of the board. At this point I have fully learned my lesson regarding those Horneses and the problems with exposing any of the side arcs to them, and every move is very carefully done with the expressed interest of keeping those shots going along the front flank, because so long as it's going along the front end of the tank, he can't hurt it. He doesn't have the AT to actually so much as scratch the paint on it. And the charge begins. I am flooring the tank into the infantry that are in front of him, which is nothing but a staff team and a command team for the artillery piece, and he gets his reaction shots at him. This is when everything comes down to the line. He can potentially destroy it because those artillery pieces, even though they're not great anti-tank guns, can puncture the side armor. He has an anti-tank of 10 versus my side armor of 8. It could hurt him, but thank goodness it doesn't, and I completely overestimated the value of it when I initially thought it through of what my strategy was going to be, and I completely ignored the fact that I could just charge over there and just kill him. And that's exactly what they're doing. They start plowing through infantry after infantry as he pulls back into the very corner of the, of the map, but he's not going to be able to move much further because guns fight or die. Once he gets into close combat, he's going to start killing them. Assuming I can make the rolls. We had a slight digression in the rules, and we ended up uh, rules lowering it for a bit and rolling off on what the result was, but the end result wasn't really all that much different. It took him a couple turns, and he plowed through, or he will plow through, the entire detachment of artillery and anti-aircraft guns over there. On the northern end of the map, the other Tiger tank hasn't been left without anything to do. It's actually lobbing shells at the pack units and just about anything you can see over there, and it's actually killing them. I mean, it's, it's taking forever to do it, but it's perhaps the slowest, most boring way to go about anything in Flames of War. It's just waiting for the odds to stack against the infantry, because I can't, I can't be hurt by them, but I can kill them if they fail an infantry save sooner or later. The northern tank, successfully having destroyed most of the pack units and at least pushed some of his tanks further back, begins gunning it over the bridge for the second time to be able to tangle with some of the units over there and give my opponent something to be concerned about. I'm hoping to pull the Hornices off just a little bit so that I can give the tank on the southern end just a little bit more breathing room as he charges up the middle of the board. And just as much, my hopes are completely dashed as I kill his artillery unit to the man, but he makes a last man standing roll, and he routes off the board. He successfully makes a skill test, and I lose the victory point for it. Now I have to kill another platoon, and it's going to be a lot harder. I have to go after the Ornices, I think, or try to keep shelling at the packs until the store closes, or whenever that'll be. 
that's not very interesting. So we're moving the tanks forward and we're just going to run them over. Uh, they've got paper thin armor. It's insulting to my king tanks to have to deal with them at such range. We're just going to go over there and run them over. It's the only proper thing to do now. His air support once again decides to show up, but once again, the deflector shields are fully armed and operational. I have literally made well over 20 top armor saves, and he begins calling my dice stacked, and I would do the same thing in his position. It's pretty ridiculous. Nonetheless, I begin chewing up his Ornises, but he moves his Panzers down to the southern, northern objective, and there's nothing I can do to stop him. My Tiger's just too out of position to kill them all or cause a rout. And that's been an Ouchie's Bat Rep, and thanks for watching. The game would have been over at around turn 12 if this was a tourney setting, but it wasn't. And it would have been a fair fight victory then, but there's nothing fair about that many King Tigers.